to 7-0. Thank you. Item 168 this evening is to consider a report from the town manager on the roof, uh, building 324 at Fort Williams Park and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. <coughs> the, the headline of the report is the roof leaks. Uh, we have a, a severe leak problem. This is the smaller of the two buildings that are remaining at Offices Row. Uh, the, the stress indicators are ceilings coming down up on the top floor as, as well as the wall deterioration as well. Uh, there are two options. Uh, one option is, is in the, about the $9,000 range. That would put on regular shingles, uh, all new, the, including work on the dormers. The second is in the 10500 range. That involves removing the current slate, putting new underlayment, uh, fixing the valleys, doing all those things, new copper fasteners, et cetera, and uh, putting the slates back on so it would keep the original slate and that, that character. Uh, what we, would, we did receive a couple of bids. They're, they're slightly different. Uh, so you know, what, what we would do is rebid it, uh, get new estimates, uh, rebids, based on you know, exactly which option you approve. And I hesitated to mention any of the amounts, but uh, I, I, in the discourse of public uh, information, I don't know how I could have avoided it. Well, who's going to move the new roof here? Roofs again. Roofs again, yeah. You want a motion as far as the roof goes, or would you like a comment first? How about a motion first, Councillor uh, Jordan? I'll move that we fix the roofs on 324 Fort Williams. I'll second that. We have a motion to second. <laughs> Councillor Jordan, please respond. Did, are you telling me which way to fix it? Not yet. No, that's, no. Not yet. that's my comment. <laughs> I think that's what we should uh, kind of beat around a little bit to see what is a feeling. I mean, my feeling is I would like to see it left as a slate roof and not to redo it with with the asphalt shingles. Now I know and if you do the whole business it's going to cost you more but maybe it could be fixed for the present time at a smaller fee. In reading your memo I uh, In the difference in the figures, I would like to, I would like to see the slate roof stay, to keep in with the buildings at the fort, if at all possible. Well, I would echo Councillor Jordan's thoughts. Uh, you, we rarely see anything these days that will uh, last more than 50 years. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with uh, not having to come back 48 years from now and. Uh, look for a new roof, so I'm more than happy at the uh, idea of slate. I'll let you do that. <laughs> we'll make an appointment, Bill. <laughs> the contractor, by the way, said 80, but that would have strained my credibility. <laughs> uh, Councilor Cogsell, please. Mr. McGovern, um, are these buildings on the Registry of National Historic? No. They're not. So we're not, we don't have to replace the slate. But no. I agree with Councillor Jordan that we should try to keep the buildings looking as much as they did in the past, but in better care. And I guess my big question is, how did it get to be so bad before it was brought before us to be corrected? I think, you know, it's a case that the, the building had a tenant and, you know, we, we just weren't aware that the problem up there was as, as large as it was. I think, the, you know, the old tenant also just uh, was not allowed to use the top floor uh, for fire reasons. Uh, I, wish, I wish I had a good answer, but I really don't other than So that. we don't inspect the properties in between renewals of leases or anything like that? I just hadn't happened to go in there to the top floor. Well, I think if we do it, we should do it yeah. completely and to make sure that we're not going to have trouble in the future. The ice and water shield is supposed to be one of the latest techniques to prevent um, backup of the ice. All right, so you're going to um, submit to an, a whole new proposal if we decide we want to have slate roofs? Yeah, I'm going to go back and 
mm -hmm. go back to the, the, the one who's already given a proposal and go back to the others to see if they're interested in proposing with a slate roof. Uh, and you know, I'll, I'll scout around to see who else does slate roofs. roofs. I don't, I'm not too sure uh, how many are in the market that do that. Councilor McLaughlin. I will go along with um, replacing it with the slate roof. I, when I was looking for some good rationale for this, I think some of the language about historic value of these buildings that's mentioned in the comprehensive plan will nicely support that move. I'm hoping that the RFP will also include interior work that needs to be done, not just the roofs. Yeah, the, the upper limit yeah. amount I indicated Does provided. Okay. Sounds like some ceiling replaced that needed some new sheet rock and painting in there too. Thank you. Other comments? Councilor Amaral. Uh, I agree with uh, replacing the roof with a slate roof as well because we only have those two buildings left in the fort and I think it's really important that we try to preserve them as historically uh, true to, to uh, the way they were originally constructed as possible. <laughs> Councilor Pearson, uh, <laughs> Chairman Krillman, uh, I concur with everything that's been said. Is it possible, I, I asked the town manager, to get those registered as historic buildings and maybe apply for a matching grant like we did for the restoration of the keeper's quarters? Is there well, the, the keeper's quarters was a special lighthouse preservation fund program. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's possible to go through a process of, of placing, of trying to get them placed in the National Register of Historic Places or Sites, which is the, the lower classification. When you do that, you, you have to sign a lot of covenants and agreements. And, uh, I just didn't know if that might make available matching funds for restoration work. The roof would have collapsed by the time we got the grant, so it would take that long. I'm always checking. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, that leaves me. <laughs> Councilor Chapel, please, your comments are wanted. Uh, I'm in favor of the slate roof, definitely. And while we're on the keeper's quarters, I'd like to report that the new carpets are all in downstairs. It looks beautiful. And the new entrance to the side, which the public will be using, is complete. And that is a nice job. Everything looks good coming along. If we can just get a couple of people to make those panels a little faster, we're going to be open. The public can plan on that. We're going to be open. When? Yeah, we're Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Seven to zero <laughs> vote. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take an item out of order. I understand we do have one of our citizens who would like to address an item not on the agenda. Can I have a motion and a second to? So moved. Second. second. All those in favor? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you very much. At this point, could we take the citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? Please come right down and identify yourself and your address, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Ridge, Pleasant Valley Avenue, Cape Elizabeth. It's basically a comment and an observation that I'd just like to share with you. Uh, this evening you've passed a budget, a budget that's quite extensive in terms of for the municipal side as well as the educational side. I would just like to make a comment in reference to these children that we're educating. They're leaving the town and a lot of them would like to reside in the town and they can't afford the housing. And I would like to present to you some ideas that might be of uh, significance that you could look into. Town-owned property that could re be retained by the town and possibly leased to these young couples. And you could set up your own criteria and whatever you may have in mind for uh, allowing these situations. You've alluded tonight uh, several times to Fort Williams. Uh, I'm not citing that one area as the Pacific area, but there's ample land over there that might be uh, construed or be uh, zoned or whatever may be necessary. We're losing our youth. We're spending many uh, thousands of dollars educating them here in the town, and they're leaving. A lot of them are becoming professional people, and they can return, but there are others who are not professional and who would like to re uh, retain their uh, living quarters here in the town. There's also some land over off Spurwink Avenue, which is uh, 
I'm going back several years ago, it used to be known as the town farm. I think it's now in a trust. There's possibly some uh, discussion between the city of South Portland, who has the ownership. I think something like that could be sued. There's ample uh, acreage over there. Uh, tying into this in terms of the education and the housing, I'd like to make a comment in reference to taxes, uh, something that may be entertained in the future. I think uh, an undue burden is being placed on our elderly citizens. We're having uh, constant increases in taxes. The greatest portion of it's going to education. These people are having a struggle in terms of paying for their medication and their food. I think possibly we could give some serious consideration to maybe taking a balance and maybe the parents who are having children in school right now maybe share a greater burden of that educational fund and possibly the older citizens who who've paid their share over the year maybe be in a position to pay for the municipal services. These are just ideas. I know it needs a lot of uh, in-depth study. But I think we're losing sight of our youth if we don't take some type of uh, action to provide housing for them here in the town. Those are my observations, and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Mr. Rich, thank you. Thank you very much. And these are just the kind of ideas that we're always looking for. Um, we're only seven people, and certainly we have our limited vistas. Any, anyone and everyone that have ideas for us, please don't ever be hesitant to come uh, uh, to the council meetings and present them either here or, or through correspondence or calls to us. Thank you. The uh, final item this evening, item number 169, um, is to consider entering into executive session to discuss an application for a hardship abatement and take any necessary action. Um, at this particular time, uh, I will call for a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. And a second. Second. Uh, to enter executive session where we will be uh, leaving the televised portion of the town council meeting. Um, I'll take a vote on that at this point. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And at this time, I will uh, let the TV people uh, go home. And thank you all very much for uh, watching this evening. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.